So you've got a new truck and you're gonna need to mount your rooftop tent. You've got three options. The first, you can build one yourself, you can buy one, or my favorite, you can modify one. Oh. So even though we sold the Colorado and got this new truck, we still have the same rooftop tent and we've got the same bed rack. So the only issue there is if you remember how the Colorado one was mounted, it had a huge amount of overhang on the other side of the bed because the bed was only five feet and the rooftop tent is 74 inches long. Well, with this new truck, we have the opposite problem. Our truck bed is 98 inches long, I believe, and our rooftop tent's only 74. So the bed is longer, it's wider, and we're basically gonna need to do something different with our rack but like i was saying there's three different ways we can do it we can go out and just get the material and build one from scratch that'll be just for this truck um, i think that's a good option it's a fun option then we could also buy one we could get the same thorax 12 inch rack except get the one for long beds which i believe the one they sell is 58 inches long instead of the 46 that we have or we can modify the existing one and use that basically stretch it out in both directions so i think we're going to go with the modify route just because it's the cheapest of the three it's the quickest also i think it's going to be the coolest because we're going to be able to put our own touches on this rack which i think makes it a little bit more fun so the garage is cleared out samurai's outside this is why this is the chassis unlimited thorax rack this is the one that we had on the colorado this is the one that's why it's so dirty on top and you can see we've got our rust spots exposed all the places we couldn't see while the tent is on there i think what happened is when that tent went on and we were trying to position it it kind of just scraped off some of this textured paint no big deal we'll just have to clean that up and paint it again our beast over there that thing's got 98 inch long bed so this thing's only like half as long as the entire bed that truck's huge the way chassis unlimited did it is they just have these bent pieces that go across in three areas they're like bent on this top and bottom side to add some rigidity to it it's nice because these ones already have the holes drilled in them too but what i think i'm gonna do is use this metal i picked up and i'm gonna lengthen this rack to be about 60 inches long and then I'm probably going to end up drilling these holes out. Right now, these are like carriage bolts, so they're square where they go in. And then they just have a regular nylock nut on the underside. I don't have a way to make a square hole in these very easily. It's definitely not going to come out clean. So what I decided to do is I'll just drill all these out to be circular and then have those be my new braces. Because my little shop press is too short to make some big bends like these ones have, these are really long to be fitting in my press especially on something that wide what i'm gonna do is just weld some braces on the side the final thing for adding some rigidity to it i think we're gonna just put some dimples in between these main braces so that's what we're gonna shoot for see how it goes All right, we've got the whole rack taken apart. So this is what I was talking about. These holes where they mount are all square. They just have some nylock nuts, pinch it all together, but I'm gonna have to drill that in these new braces that I'm gonna make. I don't have a way to make that very easily. So I think what I'm gonna do is just measure corner to corner, whatever that comes out to, like the next biggest size, I'm just gonna use some regular hex head bolts, drill these out to that size. I got the hardware. Did I get enough? We will see. I usually forget a ton of stuff because I'm so excited to get back and start bolting everything together. I only get like half of what I need. This is like 30 bucks worth of hardware though. No joke. Ended up going with half inch. Uh, when I measured out those square carriage bolts, that actually ended up being closer to 9 16 but I figured it'd be cheaper and easier to find more stuff for half inch. So we got half inch, nylock, flat washers, lock washers, pretty much it. Uh, kind of a huge step up from what came with the rack previously. I'm gonna hold on to these because we can use some more of these in the other parts of the rack to help stiffen that up. Gonna put this first piece I drilled out on the rack just to make sure everything fits. That way when I start copying these holes in my other two pieces, uh, they're all gonna line up. So 
So I gave myself a little bit of gap on each edge and it's just over 60 inches. So this is really close to what I was looking for. Now we've got to drill out these two side pieces. Earlier I was pushing down on this just to see how flexible it is. And it is very flexible because it's so long. We are gonna use some uh, dies to put some dimples in there to hopefully stiffen that up and give us some more rigidity. So this is the die we're gonna use when it comes time. This one's an inch on the inside. And then I believe, here, let's measure it out. The full dimple with the sides bent is just under two inches. So I'm gonna kind of put this on there and just space it out to see what looks best and what's gonna work best. And my plan is to have the dimple like this going down. We don't have that flare part sticking up and blocking us from mounting something on here if we do that. have blown in and all the holes have been drilled so there was 24 of these one inch holes and then 18 of these half inch holes so that took a while but now what we need to do is put some dimples in these to help strengthen them up and then we'll get to welding some braces on the side are our supports with the dimples in them. You can see the inside of where the hole saw went through leaves kind of a rough finish behind. So really what I'm gonna do is just get a wire brush and just kind of break any of those loose pieces out. Otherwise the rest of that, we're gonna keep it how it is. They kind of have a bow to them this way and that's just because it pushed them all down in the same direction. So um, yeah, they, they have a bow in them, but as we start to bolt it up, it should straighten out and then we're gonna weld on those supports and those will definitely make sure it's straight. This is the side that's gonna be facing outwards that way we don't have something raised like this that's keeping us from mounting something flat if we decide to do that honestly i think this side looks better i like this side how these kind of stick out like if i was going to make some rock sliders with steps on them this is how i do it so you could have like a little bit of a foothold but this smooth side is going to make a lot more sense for us on the rack all right now we got most of the pieces ready i'm just going to bolt this whole thing together and then we can start doing our welding man this thing's starting to look pretty tough well you can see these edges got pretty straight there's still a little bit of a bow in the middle like the triangulation with these being on there from corner to corner still isn't enough to keep this thing from wobbling i mean it feels pretty rigid if i pick it up all the way you can kind of feel it twist a little bit so those dimple dies helped but it's just like at these bend points right here and here it, it needs more so that's why we're going to weld on some more plates which are what those are over there most of the stuff tacked up. I've just got to put these ones on the bottom on both sides and I'm going to flip the rack over and try to do it upside down because it's kind of a weird angle. Uh, I thought a long time about how I was going to weld these on like if I was just going to tack it on the back and have it just be like a lip on this side. I decided I'm just going to weld all this. Um, yeah that's a lot of weld. It's a lot of wire and gas but I think I'm just going to make it a really thin bead down the whole thing and just call it good. I welded these on at, the angle came out to be like 52 degrees. I just got it to where I thought it looked good, matched them all to that. So we've got four more to tack on and then I'm just gonna weld her up. got them primed. This is our first coat of the truck bed liner. I think this stuff goes on pretty smooth. Um, the 
the previous pieces that I was using in the old rack, I kind of just primered some of the bare metal that was exposed and then put some more truck bed liner on that. So hopefully that'll look all right. If it doesn't look good, I guess we'll just keep throwing more truck bed liner on until it looks good. Halfway through welding up the supports, ran out of welding wire. This is because I welded this one, which I'm referring to as the top piece now. This one I welded all the way on the opposite side. Used up a ton of wire and gas, just like I said I was going to. The welds looked horrible. The overall look of the piece is horrible. So I decided to switch it up and then I started just welding these little sections on the inside. So now the outside kind of looks like that. It just looks like a lip right there. So what we're gonna do is let these dry and then I think tomorrow I'll flip them. That will be the important side. I always like to do the important side second. That way the side we just painted is the one facing the ground if we're not hanging it up. And then uh, probably gonna need some more, some more uh, truck bed spray because that two cans only did well it was like one and a half cans to get all of this coated now when we flip them we're probably going to need another one and a half so i'm just going to pick up two more cans for a total of four to do all these pieces Well, I'll tell you what, this little step back here on the tailgate is worth every penny. This thing has just made it so easy to get up and down, sitting stuff on the sides. I don't think I'm old enough to use the handle yet, but I'm getting really close. So the first thing I had to do was assemble these on the ground, the uh, spines, if you will. I tried to get them as close to the width of the bed as possible, which is kind of weird because it's wider here in the front and then it's a little bit skinnier back there. So I did one that was about 64 inches wide and they kind of got, you know, a half inch skinnier as it was going back. Then I threw these up there and you can see on this other side right here, there's some tie down rings. And then behind there, there's no way to get the hardware on. So I wanted it to go back past that to where I could actually get the bolts on back here. But another thing too, is to keep this space right here because I am planning on putting some gear up here. I'm gonna have about 17 inches of space up here where our deck drawer system isn't gonna reach. So we could put a uh, truck box in here, but it's not enough room for the lid to open or anything. So I think I'm just gonna build a rack and the plan is to hold a bottle of propane, a bottle of CO2 for filling up and then have like the center part just be more storage. So once we got that figured out, just kind of used a landmark, which was the front edge here, measured it back, that's about six inches and that gives us our gap here that we need. And then for final alignment, based everything off of the front and then started bolting all of these up. Now you'll see I had that piece of cardboard in the front there. That was to protect my window if one of these things decided to come crashing down on me. And then the last piece was to get this top on there. And the reason for that is because this is adjustable. You can see this rack can go for skinny beds like I had on the Colorado or really wide beds like the ones on this 3500. So got it to where these edges were pretty much the same gap. That was our center point. Did the same thing on the front end and then just moved the middle one till it matched up. Now, the cool thing about not using any of these carriage bolts in the main attachment points is that we have a bunch left over. So ended up using a ton, two in each side and then two going top down. So a ton of bracing on here. This thing's rock solid. There is something different that we decided to do this time. In the Colorado, I used both of these side holes all the way down. Now we've only got one bolt in each of these spines, so six total. I think that's gonna be more than enough. This is 3 8 hardware, and this part of the bed is actually pretty thick. With the plastic and the metal together, it's actually pretty heavy duty feeling. Here's a look at the inside of these braces on the side. We actually have a ton of room still in here, so like if we're gonna run some wiring or maybe put some lights up here, bunch of room. So there were a couple spots that need to get touched up with the paint like on the inside of here somehow i missed these spots so they just need a little bit of splash on them but that's a cool thing about using a paint like this you're not really going to notice a touch up you know it might be slightly cleaner looking in one part but the textured paint makes it awesome to touch it up i like how these bigger bolts look on here the thing just looks way more heavy duty another small detail on this 3500 that's awesome is this step right here so this is right behind the cab pull up and now we can get this tape measure i left up there that's going to help too 
for when we go to open the tent. So that's it for this one, guys. You can see we've got the rooftop tent up there. We're actually getting ready to go test this out for about seven days straight. So hopefully we did a good job on the attachment and hopefully it's nice and comfy because it's gonna be seven long days down in Johnson Valley for King of the Hammers this year. Really looking forward to it. Stay tuned for that content. Thanks for checking out our video, guys. See you next time.